one of my favorite phrases is, if you think you can't, you're probably right. Did you ever have that thought when it came to free motion quilting? Luckily, my guest took the can-do attitude and taught herself this stitching. I'd like to welcome back Molly Hansen to our second program on free motion quilting for beginners. Molly, I like this idea. Well, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here and share a little bit more about uh, these different designs and how we can creatively combine them to get a lot of mileage out of designs and paisley I think is the one we're mm -hmm. going to start off with today and paisley is great because it works in triangular shapes which there are so many triangular shapes in quilting so it's going to be a lot of fun and I can't wait to show you them all. Free motion quilting for beginners that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture, custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. During the first portion of this program, the first part of this program, we showed you some of the basic free motion quilting ideas. Now we're going to add some more design elements to it. And Molly, you designed, or you worked with the Paisley. Yes. Paisley pattern. And it's so great to work in corners because you can start in the, in the triangle That's and work right. it, yeah. fill in and very artistic. And it well, thank you. may look intimidating, but it's really not. It isn't. It isn't. And it's a great shape to get down because it's a building block of so many other quilting designs, that teardrop type shape. Mm -hmm. So it's really a good one to practice. If you weren't with us during the first program, you have to do some setup at your sewing machine. You're going to be using the same color thread in the needle as the bobbin, a cotton thread. Mm -hmm. Important to have the same weight. And then to use a quilting or a darning Darn foot, foot, which you'll see Molly demonstrate, a new needle with a new project. Use a new needle, that's right. really critical. And we have kind of a fabric sandwich for, to sample, to, to work on, and that has a layer top layer, bottom layer, and batting. And we have used fusible batting, or you could pin together the layers. And if you've missed the setup from the first show, go to nancyzeman.com, click on the videos, and you can watch the first program. Now, a straight stitch you have on your machine as well as you've lowered your feed dogs. That's right, I've got my feed dogs lowered and everything's set to a straight stitch, and then I'm ready to go. Now, if you don't know how to lower your feed dogs, check your owner's manual. That's some, right. Some machines, you'll have to cover them, but that's a crucial part. That's right. Well, let me show you how, to, how we start drawing this design. I think it's always good to start on paper. Mm -hmm. That really does help. And so I've already done a, uh, a triangle on my paper so you can kind of get the idea of how this design works so well in triangles. And I like to start in a corner and just make a wiggly teardrop shape. Oh, let's see. And then when you go down from there, you can just start adding more. And I like to go back over my teardrop one time, or my paisley, but you can go even more than once if you want, and that's what this looks like right here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of whatever whatever works, and you just fit them in accordingly. And, and you don't have to make them all the same size. That's, that's totally true, and if you need to get back to the other place, you can just travel along the edge and get back over here to make another one. And we kind of call this muscle memory. That's right, and the more you practice, the more this becomes like second nature, and then it'll be so much easier to work on when you're, when you're stitching it in your fabric. Let me just show you as Molly's getting ready, this is the sample that she made, so you can see the great flow that this has. And then one of the first steps to do it uh, is to draw up the bobbin thread. Yeah, let me show you how that looks. So what I want to do is use, like if you have this button here that puts the mm -hmm. needle down feature, put that down once and up, and then if you lift your knee up, you can just pull this tail right here and it'll pull the bottom bobbin thread up and then you're all set to not get any bird's nests on the back. Which <laughs> that's the last thing you want to see when sure. you've done some beautiful free motion quilting. And I always like to take four or five stitches in place before, to lock in that, mm -hmm. that stitch. So, and then once you do that, you can just get started on your design. 
Now, instead of using a pen, you're pushing the fabric or you're moving the fabric like That's right. Pen. That's right. And you just slowly start forming your teardrops. And again, you can vary the size. You can add as many little rings around them as you like. And then if you want to go in between them, you can just travel down between them. And notice how s slowly, evenly Molly's stitching. You don't, it's, this is not a race. Yes, and that's if, right. If you move the fabric too quickly, your, your stitches could be too long. Sloppy, you could mm -hmm. break thread, shred thread. It's not a race, and a lot of people think you have to quilt fast to quilt well, and it's not true at all. So. And I like the fact that she uses rather large stitches. It doesn't have to be, you, we, you'll see it some projects where they're dense. smaller, but you know, you can go big. You can, and it's time saving, and it also makes the texture of the project softer, so depending on what you are using it for, sometimes big is really required if you want it to feel nice and soft. So mm -hmm. it really all affects the drape, how dense your stitches are. But once you get going on this, it just builds on itself so fast, and it's a, a fun design. It really you can change directions. Now the teardrop gives it a lot of options. As Molly right. continues to stitch, I'm just going to show you some other projects that she worked on. And on this bag, you can see that the, the paisley looks kind of like a heart shape, where it's an individual paisley or two paisleys per block. On the other side, this sampler, we're combining some of the stitches from our first program, the pebble stitch around the paisley. So a very versatile thing once you learn how to do the stitching. Quilting nature-based design seems to bring a sense of calm. Wood grain is a design that relies on imperfection for its beauty. This is not a design to stress about or fuss over. Small wiggles and bumps give it character and variance in width of the grain adds to the beauty. Well, when Molly showed me this project, you said, I think this project is great because you can give it to both guys and girls. It works for guys, uh -huh. though. Because it's obviously does, isn't feminine. It has the plank of a great a hardwood fl floor. floor. Yeah. Right. And another thing that this project shows is that it's nice to have a rectangle to work within. Right. It's an edge-to-edge -edge design, wood mm -hmm. grain is, so you need to have some walls to work from in order to make it work. So, As we started before, Molly's going to do some sketching. Right. And here you can see that I've already given myself a nice space to work from, some walls to mm -hmm. work from, and that's, that's important. And so basically when you're doing wood grain, you want to start with a nice loose wavy line and then just go down a little bit and come back over and then we'll make our first knot in the wood and you make an eye shape, but you don't close it all the way and kind of work your way towards the center like a spiral and follow yourself back out and then you can go back down and just mm. trace and you know this is real relaxed you cannot make this design look bad it is just one of those ones that is very forgiving and very easy and relaxing to quilt so if you like so, to doodle yes you're going to enjoy free motion quilting yes and the more you doodle the better you'll be at free motion <laughs> quilting so <laughs> So now you kind of have that in your memory, in your muscle right. memory, and now apply it. Okay, now we know, our brain knows what to do, and so now we're going to put it mm -hmm. to work. So I'm going to make that first line. Now and what we need to mention is that you really need to clean your machine. Definitely. Cleaning our machine is essential. It needs to be well lubricated and clean. I like to clean my machine every two bobbins. Every time two bobbins that I change, I just dust it out and make sure it doesn't need any oil and just put a little drop in. And I find that that keeps everything running really sure. smoothly for me. So, And I have to say, I do a lot of free motion quilting and I've never had to take my first machine I learned on in for servicing still, but I, I really <laughs> 
I'm religious about cleaning it and oiling it, and I think it really makes everything work a lot better. So I just did my first knot, and then I'm just gonna keep making lines down below it, and you really don't want to put too many knots too close together. Sure. Because in real wood grain, you, you, you don't mm -hmm. likely see that. And so I always like to put a few rows. And it is just such a forgiving design. And you, you know, whether these are close together or far apart, can work in another. Like we mentioned, the beauty is in the imperfection. Exactly, because it's, it's natural. In, in nature, there are lots of imperfections. If you're close to the side, you can even kind of work in a half shape like this. If it doesn't mm -hmm. work as a full spiral, and just keep moving. And it really, you know, be relaxed about it and have a nice flow, and it'll turn out really nice. So, so as Molly's finishing stitching, I'm just going to show you her sample that she made so you can see the great linear look that you have for the natural wood grain free motion quilting design. Swirls work well in almost any quilting project. Now you'll learn how to manipulate the shape by creating a whole, half, or even quarter swirl, or stitch around one to create more layers to fill in space. This design teams well with many other free motion styles. You have the plan that we're gonna show you the design. Molly's going to sketch it out. The project, which you just saw, look at those beautiful swirls. It, that's, that takes a little practice, maybe more than wood grain. Maybe a little <laughs> bit, but again, that muscle memory, you keep sketching it and you'll get it. <laughs> and then we mentioned that you can combine all your free motion quilting designs together. And this art quilt features all of Molly's techniques. You just saw the wood grain from the last segment. Here are the swirls. During the first program, we did cursive or loop-de-loop. -loop. Fun to put together. And stippling even all around. Oh, that's right. There you go. The fill-in stippling yeah. that goes around the quilt. Yeah. Great, great idea. Thank you. So we'll start by doing the sketch. Right. That is the first place to start and the most important step, I still say. Sure. <laughs> OK, so basically when we're doing a squirrel, swirls, we want to start from the outside and work our way in. So I start to create a swirl shape and I like to leave about a half inch between my lines so it gives me plenty of space to work my way back out. And once you work your way back out, you've got a nice swirl and you can start to the next one or you can add hmm. even more layers and make it even bigger. And this is one of those designs you can make bigger and bigger and really fill a lot of space at a time. And so then we'd move into our next swirl. And you can see with this, we've left a little tail on this one. So we want to keep filling in this, this whoops, keep filling in this space mm -hmm. and make it nice and round. And then, even if you have this strange space right here, you could then fill this with a quarter swirl. Mm -hmm. And that is just made by little U-shapes stacked on top of each other. And that gives it a, a, an interesting texture yes. because it looks like then they're layered on top of mm -hmm. each other, which is a lot of fun. And so these quarter and half swirls can just work their way into any odd shapes that kind of are created in between, so. Nice, nice. Yeah. So then, okay, you've done it on paper. Then you take the next step. Yes, now it's time to try to get that same look on fabric. And so, again, we're gonna put our needle in our thread and pull that bobbin thread up. And get that going. Sometimes pulling up that bobbin thread it can, can be take a little a tricky. A couple times, yeah. And, and then I'm a little far away from any lifter right there. Okay, sure. there we go. <laughs> okay, good. So, I like to take five steps or five stitches sure. in, in place and maybe lock that in really good. So. Once you start making your swirls, you just work your way into the middle and slowly back. And if you've never done free motion quilting before, the setup with the, the foot is so important because that foot glides right above the That's design. That's right, yeah. Otherwise, it, if it was pressing it down, you'd never have the, mm -hmm. the freedom to move the fabric like you need to. So. 
And this foot's really nice being circular like this is, and most starting feet are circular in shape because they really help you have a line to follow, which is kind of nice. Keeps your mind thinking in circles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and just keep following your, your swirl around and make more lines around it, and you can make it as big or as small as you want. So, As Molly keeps stitching, I'll just show you the practice sample, and I wish my practice sample looked this good, but it will after I work <laughs> at it a little bit, the, varying the sizes, including some portions, half circles, swirls, I should say, with the full. You can vary it to enjoy this process. Our last free motion quilting technique of the series is print tracking. Just like it sounds, you choose a printed fabric and track or stitch along the design. This outline stitching allows you to make the fabric design really stand out while giving you the opportunity to quilt all sorts of new shapes that you may not otherwise try. Molly, you have lots of puppies and dogs at home. I'm a dog lady. So here's one of her dog beds yep. and um, hasn't been used too much. I can tell that. <laughs> but, not, um, not yet. The uh, hexagon wouldn't be something that would be easy to get exact when free motion, but using the print. Yes, you can yeah. really get some interesting textures with your quilting mm -hmm. by following geometric designs in the fabric instead of just going freehand on top of it. So we have a geometric print. Notice no sketching because the sketch is, is on, the, on print. the fabric. We're mm -hmm. just following the lines basically. And so if I'm doing that, you just look for the edges and just try to carefully follow and slowly work your way down one side of your hexagons. And you want to cross over and do another hexagon like this. And if you do it like this snake back and forth, then when you go up, you can catch the sides you missed. Sure. And some and you'll make go over twice. To some of the middles you will go over twice, but then you're only doing just that middle section twice, which, which really works well. And so then you get these really great um, textures, and mm -hmm. as we were saying, the, there's all these little designs inside the hexagons where if you wanted to practice your pebbles or your chevrons or anything in this fabric or in any print tracking, you can look for what you're working, what you want to get mm -hmm. better at and find a fabric that's got that in it and just track it. And if circles are it, look for, look for polka dots. So. There are other print options and a floral print is, is great. Yes, florals really really are a fun one because there's so many unique shapes that you can find in florals. And in this, I found you know this beautiful floral, but they weren't all connected. And so I had to figure out how to get from one space to the next without breaking thread. And so remember those chains of pearls that we learned in the first in the first episode, that, that's what I used to just connect the way through. And it gives an interesting de design element, which is really fun. And if you see on this one, you can't see the stitching as well on the front, but when you flip it over, you see how tracking those florals really gives you some unique looks and if you did a, a, a you know a, a solid on one side and a floral on the other you could make something like a placemat that's reversible or use just the what just is the, the wrong side as yeah, the right side as the right because side. it's exactly. more interesting than the print I, there I, you go so now there are so many options that you can use for prints I want to show our viewers this one because this has roses and birds and yes, leaves uh, and when we were talking about print tracking and we found this fabric I thought this would really really work well just like this one did because you've got these spaces been between these roses mm -hmm. and these birds and you can just you can follow the outside lines you can get as detailed as you want and connect them by your chains of pearls and never have to break your threads. So this kind of design is what you want to look for in that. And you know, we've shown the easiest as the last technique. That's but true. We wanted people to get, we wanted you to give the try. Well, Molly, this wraps up our sewing segments of this series and it's been a pleasure to get familiar with all of these great ideas. Well, I thank you so much for having me on the show and I hope everybody will try these new techniques out and, and learn a little bit more and maybe quilt their own quilts. So. Uh, I think we will. Good. And I hope that you will take these ideas, free motion quilting, whether you've been quilting for a while or haven't done it before and give it a try because it's certainly easy and relaxing to do. I was surprised to learn that quilts can be part of the foundation for a hospital. 
not literally, but through the making and donating of quilts, a humanitarian aid hospital is being built in Tanzania. Please welcome Kate Robbins, who is our guest. She heads up the program Comfort Quilt Project, which is part of Roads to Life Tanzania. Well, Kate, welcome to Sewing with Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. I'm glad to be here. When I heard about your project of making a quilt block, sending it to your organization, making a donation, and what it does, I was so impressed. Give our viewers an overview of Road to Life Tanzania. Well, thank you. Um, Roads to Life Tanzania has been doing uh, development work in Tanzania, just south of the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania, near, uh, near a village called Kololo, um, for nearly 50 years. And they've done a lot of things, build roads, educated kids, uh -huh. done other agriculture projects, and now they're building a hospital. Um, and we're, we're trying to think of a way to help them do that. And so we've come up with a project called Comfort Quilts, and we're having quilt blocks like a block builds a building, we're mm -hmm. having a quilt block help build this building. We're asking uh, the quilting community to uh, donate a 12 inch block, any kind of pattern, any, we just ask no embellishments, just uh, sure. anything that could be used in a hospital. So it would be like a 12, in, 12 and a half inch, yeah. 12 and a half inch square, so it would be a 12 inch finished block. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. um, and those will then be made into uh, quilts that will be used in the hospital. Um, I have a group of volunteers who have, wow. uh, who are going to help put them together. Um, and we have one of those with us today. We do, yeah. we do. Um, we've been, the project started, oh, not quite a year ago, and um, we've had uh, quite a few blocks come in, and as well as donations, and the donations will help us finish building the hospital and equipping it. Um, and the quilts, like I said, will be used by the people who are patients at the hospital. Now, some, sometimes when you're at consumer shows or events, you give away a little square of African fabric so that they remember to make a block. And some of those fabric squares have been incorporated in the blocks. They have, which was kind of a surprise to us. Um, but it's real uh -huh. fun to see that. And I think uh, the people in Africa, when they see their quilts come back and see some of their fabric, <laughs> might be surprised. Uh, this is a good example of that. Um, this corner squares here mm -hmm. um, in this particular block are from a sample that we did give out at a quilt show. Um, just sure. to show the showgoers about African fabrics and the like, and um, it was fun to see how someone used it. Now, in Tanzania, the hospital is uh, so needed, and explain the number of people or number of beds right now that are in the hospital and and why you're building another one. Well, back in 1983, they started with a very small healthcare center, kind of a drugstore, if you will, and then it went to a maternity ward, and, and then a healthcare facility. The current facility has 32 beds, but the daily occupancy is over 50, Nancy. Sure. That, that means two people per bed on uh -huh. most days. Like I said, Two sick people per yeah, bed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As Americans, we don't even like the thought of sharing a room, much less a bed with someone. So, um, as you can see, the need is very great there. Um, we're hoping this facility will ha um, house at least 100 beds, as well as it will have surgical um, unit, which we haven't had in the past. Oh. They have a blood lab um, that they can use um, for more procedures than they've been able to do. So, it will really be a, a great facility for the people of the area. You have a great quote on your brochure, and why don't you read that to our viewers because it ties in building humanitarian need as well as quilts. Thank you, it does. Um, it's called the Comfort Quilt Project, and we say that is binding the fabric of generosity and talent to give relief and comfort to those in need. And that is truly what this project is about. And it's comforting to see that th we have this cute picture of these little kids and one of the quilts that you've donated and, and being obviously not used in a hospital but used there and uh, we can use quilts all over the world but this is your little corner of the world that you're working with so every year you're just going to be sending more quilts to that area. And they will certainly be used and much needed there. Um, it's a big undertaking to equip the hospital, mm -hmm. and this is just one way that we can tie the people here, the very generous quilting community, to help those that are really in need in Africa. You're over halfway there of the $9 million project, so congratulations. We're working on it. Um, we're, this is one, the Comfort Quilt Project is one part of that fundraising effort, and so far we've been pretty successful, and we hope that uh, it, this program might help us bring in more. Well, Kate, thank you for joining us, and I'm sure you'll get some quilt blocks and donations from our viewers. We look forward to that. Thank you for the opportunity, Nancy. You're welcome. I hope you 
been enjoying this series that we've been working with, and we'll be back next time on Sewing with Nancy for some more sewing, quilting, and embroidery ideas. If you'd like to re-watch this program or any of the most recent Sewing with Nancy programs, you can go to nancyzeman.com and click on videos as well as the Nancy Corner videos, and you'll be able to see the programs at your convenience. Join us on Facebook, on our blog, on Twitter, and Pinterest. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Molly Hansen has written the free motion quilting for beginners book that serves as a reference for this two-part series. The book includes the fundamentals of free motion quilting along with 10 practical projects. It's $19.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2819. Order item B1248. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.